Hello and welcome to The Pulse. In part two of this week's show, Hong Kong's shrinking English language traditional news media, we also look at China's nationwide crackdown on human rights lawyers and activists. But first, sit down, put your feet up, have a glass of water, or maybe not. Most of us take it for granted, but the discovery of excessive lead in water supplies at some public housing estates has sparked an outcry and put the government in full damage control mode. The excessive lead levels in local drinking water supplies were first brought to public attention by Helena Wong after the Democratic Party conducted tests in Kowloon City's Kai Ching estate between April and June. Four samples contained excessive lead. One had 38 micrograms per litre of lead, 3.8 times higher than the recommended World Health Organization limit. Initially, the government said the Housing Department and Water Supplies Department's own tests showed lead levels within the WHO limit. But last Friday, the Director of Housing admitted that four samples had exceeded that limit. The government has held a series of joint department press conferences to answer public concerns. At first, the government was determined to point the finger of blame at one plumber and play down the responsibilities of the main contractors, of whom China State Construction International Holdings is the most prominent. Mr. Lam also revealed Ho Boy Gay had used almost the same materials on various other projects in recent years, including St. Paul's Hospital in Causeway Bay, more than 10 public housing estates, and some private housing blocks. The Democratic Party says its own tests are still revealing higher level than those of the government tests. One of its samples at Kuala Estate found 62 micrograms of lead per litre. The water sample I collected at Kuala uh, Housing Estate was the overnight water sample. Whether the overnight water from the pipe stay safe over eight hours, whether it is safe for people to drink or to use it for cooking. For the uh, government water sample, I don't know how long they wait until they turn on the tape. Uh, I guess it's uh, perhaps uh, four to five minutes. For its part, the Water Supplies Department insists that the Democratic Party's sampling methods may be misleading. For the government, I don't know what is their intention. Say so if, if you want to know whether what the, the, the pipe water is uh, safe to drink and uh, why, why you need to wait for a few minutes to collect the water, because this is not the general public, a uh, general practice of the, of, of the residents living here. The general practice is that you just turn on the tape and get the water to cook and drink. 
On Thursday, the government said that some of the soldering material used in the pipes contained as much as 50% lead, while it should have been at least 99% tin. Meanwhile, the government is being urged to test other possible sources of contamination of pipes in prefabricated units made in the mainland. Uh,有問題的口呢,即是我有用含元量的,含元成分的,呃,消耗物呢,其實嗰啲都唔係預製件嚟嘅。你其中七個水板有事嗎? 我都順利,當你有監管,水務處也會有某程度可以監管到的。但是如果在大陸製造的預製件,水務處也不可能上去監管這個工作。in recent years, the government has introduced the use of prefabricated kitchens and toilets with water pipes into home construction projects. These units are manufactured in the mainland. China's Day Construction was the main contractor responsible for building the Kaicheng Estates. It was also in charge of building 15 other public housing estates and many other private projects. These include the newly built Children's Hospital in Kai Tak and the water treatment plant in Taipo. The prefabricated water pipe fittings are produced by a Sengen subsidiary factory. And in the mainland, there is no licensing system to govern plumbing works. Low-quality pipe fittings manufactured in the mainland are sold for as little as one yuan each in Sanjiang. China State Construction has been the main contractor for housing estates in Hong Kong since 2002. However, the Kuai Lun Estate, which also has slashed problems, was built by Socam Development Limited, a subsidiary of the Hong Kong-based Soyon Group. We this week, the government said it will be testing water samples in all new public housing estates and has established a committee to review the construction process for public housing projects. I think the problem is, com is, 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 is mainly because of lack of accreditation and that in, it, it provides an opportunity for the manufacturer or supplier okay, to include to uh, okay to include some toxic material inside the um, uh, water pipe or the soil material. 在地盤的監管的角色是非常之重要,水務處沒有可能每一個環節都有來車,地盤也有一個監管的團隊在那裡,房屋處、房屋處、委託的顧問公司是有這個角色在地盤那裡監管的。a newly set up task force of independent experts has begun to investigate the scare and to review the regulatory system for the construction industry with regard to construction materials, quality verification and work procedures. Welcome back. If you're going to call yourself Asia's world city, you would apparently wish to be seen as a multilingual and multicultural society, and that includes some lip service at least to the world's lingua franca, English. But if you are a non-Chinese speaker living in Hong Kong, it's been getting harder to keep up in a timely fashion with what's been going on, as the traditional English language news media has been shrinking. Last year's umbrella movement protests highlighted some of Hong Kong's deepest political divisions. 
It also brought the SAR, for the first time in almost two decades, back into the focus of international media. It was a concentration of media attention not seen in Hong Kong since the city's handover in 1997. Unfortunately, the temporary nature of many of those assignments meant that overseas-based journalists were sometimes scrambling to catch up. It's actually quite difficult for them to grasp the nuance of the Hong Kong story because I think it's um, far more complex than they realize and um, they may not have the historical context just because they haven't lived through this society during those times. Hong Kong's own non-Cantonese speakers trying to follow local events sometimes feel even less well served by the mainstream media. There's increasing cynicism in the community about the editorial stances of Hong Kong's non-subscription TV channels and daily newspapers. In English media, the situation is more crucial because there's just less of it. There were a lot more broadcast media in Hong Kong prior to the handover because the handover story was coming. And you had the BBC here and NHK and overseas operations, uh, plus the local organizations were up and going. Um, you had Metro News, which was operating then. You had uh, commercial radio, which actually had an English service and, and, and did some work in those days. Um, now it doesn't really anymore. Uh, so it was a much livelier broadcast scene at that time. 英文傳媒如果講緊報紙的時候,第一份是付費,一份是免費的。如果講緊電視台同埋電台的時候,電視台當然就是我們都知道有兩個,但是他們提供的訊息其實嚴格而言都是非常不足的。Of course, in those days, the government didn't read Chinese, or the, the senior civil servants or the senior government officials. Didn't, didn't know Chinese. So if they want to know about uh, how local people feel and some of the local issues, they actually welcome uh, people who are local, who speak Chinese, who are Chinese, writing in English, uh, which bridges the gap. But now it's the opposite. Locally, you had the SCMP, you had the Hong Kong Standard. At one point, there was a third player, the Eastern Express, which was a whole new English language startup newspaper. So definitely, it was more vibrant. The Eastern Express got off to a good start, provided serious competition for the South China Morning Post, and for a while, improved prospects for the English language journalist. Unfortunately, it folded in 1996, just two years after it launched. The standard still exists as a free tabloid, but SCMP's dominance of English language dailies remains very much unchallenged. Long time ago, I'm even if 20 years ago, 15 years ago, even 15 years ago, I think when you're a visitor from outside, you very quickly become part of the Hong Kong community because you're immediately plugged into the most urgent local issues, and that's no longer happening. Some non-Chinese speakers turn to social media and online sources for their local news. On Facebook, citizen journalists continue to report from ongoing protests in Hong Kong and elsewhere in English. Also on the web, the Hong Kong Economic Journal launched its own English news website in 2011. Even the South China Morning Post web-based coverage responding faster to the fast-changing news can seem freer than reports that editors have had more chance to pour over. The Post is capable of putting out a very good product, and when it turns its, its attention to something and its resources, as it did during Occupy Central, producing that rolling hour-by-hour -hour update, they did an absolutely fantastic job that any newspaper should be proud of. It was only during, I think, Occupy that when you saw the, the live blog on the SCMP that you, you truly saw local you know, English coverage, and we're trying to do that every day. There is a, a temporal and content gap uh, between Chinese and English, what does get through is often late. You wait, you know, six hours to two days. There's even a time difference between the RTHK Chinese and English feeds. Um, so we're trying to fill that void. With a group of fellow journalists, Tom Grundy recently set up an independent web-based news service, the Hong Kong Free Press. Their website, which came online at the beginning of this month, already claims over 500,000 visitors. <laughs> It's about projecting Hong Kong's message to the international community and especially in this really critical moment uh, with the political reforms, with 
um, the narrowing of civil society, like the space for civil society, concerns with press freedom. Hong Kong Free Press is still hoping its business model of multiple revenue streams to be sustainable, but it is also facing the issue of accreditation. On the day we launched, we got an email from, uh, from the government saying that we're not going to get access to the government information system, which is standard you know, uh, for, for any news media. It's also a struggle to get access to the, the CGO, central government offices, so that when there is a press conference, when CY or Carrie Lam or whatnot are speaking. Now, with the addition of online media, government is very much challenged as to who is a qualified reporter. Um, or are they just admitting uh, just any ordinary citizen and giving them the privilege of the press? Um, this policy really needs to be, to be reviewed because if you don't get access to government information, you're missing a lot. And then there's the language issue. I don't say it in English, but I hope I answered the question. You understood, right? My audience doesn't understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I already explained it in Cantonese. Yeah, we would Sorry like it in that. English, please. Sorry? We would like it in English, please. I already provide the answer. Thank you. Yinan 是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡是在這裡
to a, a large-scale crackdown last year in the run-up to the 25th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. And now we're seeing another large-scale crackdown on human rights lawyers. And these lawyers took on sensitive cases, some of the cases that are, involve freedom of expression, free speech, freedom of religion, uh, ethnic minorities, uh, torture, other things. So if there are no lawyers to take on these sensitive cases, then I think for sure we could say that the human rights situation will deteriorate further. Well, that's it for this week and indeed for this season of The Pulse. The summer doldrums are upon us. We'll be back with a new season on the 9th of October. Meanwhile, if the longing and withdrawal symptoms get too much, you can watch previous episodes on our RTHK website or chat to us on our Facebook page, RTHK's The Pulse. See you in October. Goodbye. Oh, damn. Moving Dan, don't you listen to him, Dan? He's a devil, not a man. He spreads the burning seed.